and we remind ourselves of His Word, His promises. Amen? Because the enemy is trying to steal that out of your heart. That's what he does. At night, he'll come and try to steal out of your heart, saying that you're not saved. But when you recollect in your mind and ask the Holy Spirit to bring it to recollection that we are saved by putting faith in Christ and His righteousness and not our own, amen. And that He became sin who knew no sin, that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ. Then you're not condemned. You don't wake up with a guilty conscience and feel condemned because the enemy has been working on your mind all night. You have let that scripture be true and every other word a lie. Amen? Amen. That will stir the gift up. If you really, okay, meditate upon that scripture just for a minute. While I walk back up, you steps. <laughs> <laughs> he has made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to become that sin sacrifice for us that we, through him, may be made the righteousness of who? God. God. The righteousness of God in Christ. So, who is the accuser? And what is he accusing you of? If you made the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Is your faith in Jesus Christ and His shed blood at the cross? Man, that's, that, I'm telling you when, you, when you get a hold of that, that'll get you excited. Because that's what Jesus did for us at the cross. We spoke about it last week about the physical pain and the physical things that happened at the cross, but what about the spiritual things that took place? He conquered hell, death, and the grave. Amen. This is a time of rejoicing. And not only did He conquer hell, death, and the grave in His own life, He conquered hell, death, and the grave in you, your life, in my life. Amen. That's Amen. what I'm saying here. If we knew and know the gift of God, we would seek after righteousness. Because it says in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who hunger and seek after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. Filled. Filled with what? They'll be filled with the Holy Ghost, who is what? Holy. Amen. That's right. Sometimes we forget that. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. He is holy. Amen? Amen. Right. When you see ungodly things happening in the church, that's not the Holy Spirit there. That's some other spirit of what? Divination there. Because He is holy. I'm just letting you know. Thank you, Jesus. You will seek after and hunger after. It will be like a thirst inside you that you want all of God. You just don't want one scripture or two scriptures. You just don't want to come on Sunday morning and get inspired. You want to be here every time the doors are open because you're hungry. Anybody ever been hungry in the physical? Yes. You stop at all these fast food joints and eat all kinds of mess? I have. I know. I'm on Chick-fil-A now. I got all praise and canes. That's a plus. <laughs> but I've been hungry in the physical. When you're hungry in the physical, that stomach will have you drive places that your mind don't even know about. It's true. Now it's time to be hungry in the spirit. It's not time to draw back and play around on the computer and Facebook. It's not time to draw back and get all consumed in your job. It's not time to draw back and get consumed in even your hobbies. It's not time to draw back and get consumed with vacations. It's time to press forward, praise God, Amen. and be hungry for righteousness and be hungry for the work of the living God. And you will fill you with the spirit and anoint you like never before. I'm telling you, there's a remedy. As judgment hits this nation, and I believe judgment's about to hit this nation like never before because the nation has risen up in pride. They mock North Korea, and North Korea, yes, is a wicked nation and a wicked people as a whole. There may be some Christians in there, I don't know, but I know the leadership is wicked. But God sometimes will take a wicked nation to chase another nation that have made a covenant with it and turn it back on it. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But that doesn't mean the remnant is going to be hit. What does this word say? Woo! A thousand may fall on your left side. Ten thousand may fall on your right. But none shall come near your dwelling. Why? Because you made him your habitation. That stirs the gift up. That's what I'm talking about. It don't stir the gift up to sit home and watch soap opera stuff. It don't, it don't stir the gift up to sit home and watch the History Channel, even the Bible on the History Channel, because that's half of it's wrong. It stirs the gift up to actually take God's Word and put it into remembrance. Amen? Amen? We limit God in our lives many times. We limit His power in our lives because we lack stirring the gift inside up. And we lack 
taking His Word and putting it in our heart. Because when you put His Word in your heart and let the Holy Spirit bring it back out, it, it, it stirs your faith up. It increases your faith. It edifies your faith, praise God. Woo, well, you know that, what? No weapon, Isaiah 54, 17. That no weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. That's beautiful. That means they will be formed. Don't get me wrong. There will be threats by the enemy. He will threaten you. He'll put situations in your life and you're going to feel threat. You're going to know a weapon is formed against you. You can feel the weapon. But don't look at the weapon. Because the weapon that's formed will not prosper. Right. Right. Yeah. Now hear what I said. This is, this is the inheritance of the saints. Right. This is the heritage of the saints. Amen. And every tongue that rises up in the, against you in judgment, you shall condemn. That's the Word of God. He's speaking of Israel because Israel was His at that time. But He's speaking to all those who were His that have come in through Abraham, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We've been grafted in. So now we have that promise too. That no matter, no weapon formed against you were prosper. Praise the Lord. If we know Jesus, if we knew the gift of God, it says in Jeremiah 31, 34, and they will no longer teach each man his neighbor and each man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all of them will know me. From the little one among them, even to the great one among them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Now that's beautiful. Every time the enemy tries to bring your past back up, whether it happened yesterday or 20 years ago, and bring that sin back up, to recollection in your mind. You can say, God doesn't remember it no more. Amen. He has forgiven my iniquity. He asked of me to learn of him in Matthew 11, 28 and 29. I'm going to read it again. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. If you knew the gift of God. Get it? Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. If we know Him, if we learn of Him, we'll take His Word because that's how we learn of Him. We worship Him in spirit and in truth. And if we have a care, if we have a problem, it says in 1 Peter to cast all of our care upon Him. We're going to have a lot of Word this morning. Have you recognized that yet? You know why? Because it's the Word that brings the power of God in your life. It's not my philosophies or my great poetry or if I stand up and say, this is my Bible, and I tell you a good, swelling story about myself, or my family, or me. There's nothing wrong with testimony, but that should be about Jesus when we come to meet on Sunday morning. It should be about the world of God on Sunday morning. It should be the power of God. The power of God is found in Christ's name crucified. And as His Word goes into your heart, it builds power in your life. 